chicken wings for that money, even though they was no good. But you do get something for your money. But when you put your money in the church bucket, what do you get back? Hope and a future after you die. And my position on that, if I have to die to experience heaven, I don't need that religion. Mm. Anyone who tells me that I should be content with accepting hell on earth, when the white man has his heaven here, and the Chinese man has his heaven here, and the Arab and East Indian has his heaven here, and they're even building their heaven in my ghetto, and you're telling me I got to die in order to experience what they are getting right now? That's a religion I don't need because that's a religion for servitude. And so we have to put the black church to task and ask them, what are you doing without Jesus money? Let me tell you what they're doing with your Jesus money. Every black church in America has their money in a white bank. It is the white banks that are funding the regentrification ethnic cleansing movement. So all of us go to church. We put $3 million in the church coffers every Sunday. $3 million goes to a white bank every Sunday. And guess what they do on Monday? They take three million of black people's white Jesus money and they give loans to white land developers and businesses and entrepreneurs to come into the ghetto where the church is located, buy up all the property and force grandma out on the street homeless. Now grandma been going to that church for 30 years. Grandma been giving that church $50 every Sunday. And lo and behold, grandma had to finally face the reality that it was your Jesus money that put your ass on the street. Mm. This is the Cutting Edge on next Wednesday night. You're listening to Prince Allah. You know, I know people don't remember their man, they know Prince Allah. British fire man. Before that you heard Sugar Miner. Rough whole life, may I tell you. Side of the record, yeah, man. All the one, hey, trust me, tonight, we want you to all the people them who email me and call me and tell me why I moved. I used to that program the last week, about um, the, when you play for the Christian, them, trust me. Well, that's what we do, you know. We want, we want the education spread far. You understand? We want the education spread far. So we want the people, them, who is not of our vibration, as them want to say. Understand, say, we have literature, documentation, and documentaries that can educate them also into their consciousness and their belief because when i try put over nothing for no one we just say here's the information do what you want to do with it show it if you want show it way eat treat if you want eat treat but this is about sensitizing the people them in certain things that you normally hear every day by your radio or in your church we try to bring it and expose it to the people them. So, where you can use, use it. Where you don't want to throw it to you, I just throw it go. Fred Lock celebrate a big, big anniversary. Yes, a Red Bones. Who want to yell up Fred Lock? Yeah, man. Baseline, the Rasta. Trust me, man. Yeah, you're the guitarist. I mean, I tell you, how are the instruments that God out of the music? How the instruments them just left out the music so Believe you me. You say, we want to up Kechima. Who is it on the program? Tell me. Robert, Robert Williams and Kechima, who is sitting. I mean, I try to hear it, you know. I mean, I mean, I find all the way possible to stand up in the airport and over me here say, <laughs> You want to see me at the computer because it's all because I hear those you know, things before flight I leave, you know. I tell you that I beg you, man. I beg Anyway, you know, sir, I come out of a country where I'm in the country. I am not see the night up to now in the country. Believe you me. I know the first time it happened, you know. It come like this. Every time I go, 20 years ago, I go out of the country, you know. I'm in the stage. I go on the stage at 11 o'clock. This is in the night, you know, and the sun is shining. I 
And by the time you come off of the stage, we spend one and a half hour on the stage. By the time we reach halfway in my performance, you know, me see the night come. And by the time he come up, me see the sun bright up again, you know. Well, this time it works now. This time me had sit down and I try to figure out how me not sit down light and no night there. You know, if I see the truth, no night there, that's Zion. Well, it's not Zion at the day, but there was no night there. And I can't wait years, like, for the next two months, them now have no night. We up in the North Pole, so, yes. Them say, in the summer, two night, two, sorry, two months appear night, pure day. And then them have a next now where them have two months appear night. Can you imagine you living in a country and you're not to the place that get dark up? <laughs> it's frightening, Rasta. Believe you me. Every time you pull by, by, by hotel with that look, I'll be to the place bright up. I say, all right, we all go to sleep and all around. By the time we wake up, certain things are certain things. By the time me, go, me look at my clock, I'm at, 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 at uh, 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the night. I may draw the window curtain and look outside. I'm still seeing the sun outside. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's frightening. But, yes, I saw the earth orbit and I saw the sun stay and I saw the moon stay. You know, sometimes the place cold, sometimes the place hot. Now, we have experienced hot, hot summer. They might experience summer, but for them, summer still cool. We are talking about the country, them Finland. Yes, that is how we go. That's why I never hear about the stepping race the last week. We got people on the top, 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 top there. About 200 miles off of the Russian coast there. The Russian border. Believe you me. We love it still because it's poetry reading and poetry festival. And we never really go up to them places that go read poetry without music. So, yes. In it and I reflect, you know, say, me I watch the news and them I ask a question, is I, is, is I still winning? <laughs> For I tell you, that, 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 that group there is a phenomenon in a earth right now because, you know, so them all, them take over a couple cities in, in a Iraq and them take a, I think them go with half a Syria, Syria too. But the problem with America have now, you know, is that meanwhile they are protecting their borders from outsiders. ISIL is now recruiting people from inside. There's a movie called The Enemy Within. The Enemy Within is a very serious, serious enemy that, you know. Because you can't stop American from going to America. And you can't stop American from being in America. So while you can't stop people from coming to America... The ISIL people, them are actually recruit Americans from America, inside America. So I don't know them going to angle that, you know. I don't know them going to angle that now because the last two players, them say some Arab bring down the, the, the building them. Them say some Arab bring down the building them in, a, in, in America. But those Arabs got their training in America. Imagine you go out and train in school for fly and you say you don't go out and over fly the plane, you don't go out and over land the plane. Then that about make people get suspicious. If you in that school and you don't go out and learn one and one make two, but you don't want to know about two and two make four. You, you, the, the suspicion of that. And some of them say they don't go out and fly the plane, they don't want to land the plane. And obviously they never want to land the plane. But now there is a crisis in America where there is a kind of paranoia about where will the next bomber be what state meanwhile we see and this is serious thing them have some things where them call where them where them call the 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 where them hide under the ground some explosive where them usually put in the dirt or you step on it it explode well now apparently the ISIL people them create some where when it explode it's all a half a city blow up <laughs> no don't miss them I try out some miss them I, I, I show off with some on the internet there where, where, where when the, when the, when when them explode it's like it's like almost half a city it's explode the way the man them said the thing now so the American them is in a problem and them really seriously, I think, for put, put American on the ground now. 
Because them must say, no, them people have got too far now, Rasta. Them people, them people are really have got too far. But guess what? Them gone far. Them gone far. So we don't know where we are now. We thought that the killing of Ben Laden would mean a new era. But apparently, worse than Ben Laden is here. You can't kill a man, you can't kill an ideology, you know. The ideology is, is transcendental. You kill a man, you can't kill the ideology. And the ideology live on in the hearts and minds of people who embrace that ideology. And now we see little girls, teenager girls, leaving their homes and their parents to travel into Syria to join this group and they are willing to do anything and everything to maintain their status in this group called ISIL. What a terrible thing. Meanwhile back at home here. <laughs> Meanwhile back at home the man them say look here man. You remember the, how, much more, how much weeks ago we did read this thing about the, 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 the um the raising of car this and car that and how much it going to cost if you speed and this and this and that. Now the man them change the law legislation after how much years? 70 odd years. Imagine the law. Now I tell you, we can't even talk about that, you know, because it's every year they get vexed, you know. A law that if it's 70 odd years and the man them just had decided to never going to change the law because it's old. You know how much law? You know, say, there was a law on the books. I don't know if it is still there. I asked a law, I asked my brethren, um, Samuel, from last year, I asked him. I asked him if this law is on the books still, and he said, don't know. Did you know that there was a law in the book that says, black people in a Jamaica can only sell fish and ground provisions yes you was not allowed to sell like cloth like the Syrian them and the Jew them in Jamaica you were only allowed to sell fish and ground provisions as black people I don't know if them take it off of the books but it's I don't know the liar said no no neither it will be very interesting to find out if it is still on the books. I don't know if money can do a, a investigation to find out if that law that we black people is, is only allowed to sell fish and ground provisions. Because it don't really make no difference now because we see say black people are sell all themselves now more than just fish and ground provisions. So but it will be interesting for know. Just like the idea of Obia. You know, who be illegal in Jamaica. I don't know why. But I think uh, that is the next thing which will come after too. That is like a whole thing where who be illegal. Why is who be illegal? I mean, really and truly, everybody involved in some who be thinking or not. Church people especially, who say them believe in Jesus. If something wrong with them, if them pick me out of hearing, then go on a man. If them pick me, what if they want to pick me pass? Eh? As a matter of fact, some people go out with a man for win lottery. The problem with it is that when they go out with a man for win lottery, some of them don't buy no ticket. <laughs> and they make me for win the lottery. You know, the man will pray to God all the while and say, God, please let me win the lottery. Do God. For years I pray to God, please let me. One day God just answer him and say, why you don't buy a ticket? It's a serious thing. But there are certain laws that we are confronted with that we need to go up on it just like oh no them go up on the the car thing now the the, the, the road traffic thing we did it for 70 years before me born from my my mother picked me and that's a time when car never did a drive maybe car never did even there me at them time there 70 years ago and the man never law about traffic and how to maintain traffic this and that upon the books and them just sit it's where them people are long in a parliament at all. They want some ganja for smoking them, man. Believe you me. The Prime Minister need, need to tell them to they must start 
parliament with the smoke in a fast spliff. I mean, we know all the them smoke ganja in there already still, you know. Yeah, you, may, you have six-year-old man in there. We know a couple of them directly where a ganja man them. We know I tell you how still. But we know to them smoke ganja. For the side of them, they are the yard among certain men and all them things there. They're not hiding. But we don't know. We don't know how that could possible. How that possible. How is that possible? That some man can sit down in a parliament and 70 other years something there from the books and them just realize that road get bigger, road get longer, more road, more traffic, more this, more that. And them just realize that the laws need to change as it govern or as it deal with these things. Anyway, you know, say, a brethren of mine and many, where the Ulpa ones don't know the brethren still, but them know him place. And it's a very important entertainment center in a Jamaica, in a the western part of Jamaica, in a Negril. For those of you who know MX3, MX3 is responsible for every February this region of a six, a whole week event honoring Bob Marley. MX3 just that day also, I think it's when we go there. I was given an award for well, well, contribution to the industry. You know, uh, what I'm calling Life Achievement Award. Yes. The Bridging gave, gave me, and as a matter of fact, me and Lee Scratch Perry had a wonderful time. The last time I was there, it was Lee, Lee Scratch Perry and myself. I was playing music at least Scratch Perry. As a matter of fact, it was my birthday. I think it was at least Scratch Perry's birthday or my birthday. But everybody remember who for birthday it was, you know, but I want to have a birthday. I think it's my birthday too, you know, because, yeah, my birthday, at least Scratch Perry, I think happy birthday to me. <laughs> Panty. But really and truly, for those of you who don't know about Cuba, Cuba, the Bridge was totally involved in development and entertainment in the grill pathway in pathway and it really a loss for the grill for jamaica cuba i think it was about 50 a year old you know yeah it was about 50 a year old and we had some plans afoot we were planning certain things for the grill I will tell about we, no matter about me and him. We are still going to try to structure certain things where we would have go down there and do certain things. Music, we are dealing with now. And we, we, we are set the thing and set the thing. And may I tell you, it's it, it, it really devastating for no say the bridging gone, you know, bridging. And when I'm bridging, 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 where anytime you are Cuba, sit down and talk, you have to talk about IAV. IAV. I have a Yes, most great thing. How are you there, man? Well, I'm gate, you know what, you know what, I'm the gate not too far from the road. And that, and bro, it's all like you're still going to Cuba, man. Well, I wouldn't mind sometimes taking a trip there. Ah, uh, yeah, me just like the people, they're like uh, stand up on Cuba and the parts now we have Cuba, MX3, you know, socially conscious of him surroundings and Negro and all them really, and as a bridge, you know, you are inspired totally, totally. Tell me where you are going, sir. Where really you are going, sir? You mean, like, in a street? I can't hear you, you know? You mean, for example, what go on at any street? No, man. What, 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 what I'm to him? Why, why I'm passing? What, what cause me for passing? All right. Um, Ten suffer from pressure, right? Blood pressure. Hmm. And then, you know, at the bridging, you know, mm-hmm. no fire life, you rasta fire life differently. And in my own analysis, the fact that you're in drink, and enough time, man, we mix all type of drinks together. Mm. And drinking, don't go together. Mm. You know what I mean? And some of them energy drink, yeah, it really mucks up your heart. and then Especially the boom, them. Yeah, so, 
I think even I mean in in all right. And I I end up uh, with have a three day function and agreement. Mm. Two and one and a half day at Fetta we and one and a half the next three. And the Saturday, the twenty third of May. Oh. Me listen, you know. The next three. And then now uh, in the taxi in the night, go to South Hospital. Must be and then transfer him to a do an MRI and, and then we're going forward to the ambulance in and get a um a heart attack. So from then time the Thursday he hasn't spoken to anybody until Friday and pass out, you know. But basically the analysis is hard and then and get the two stroke. I think I think a two stroke him get. Yeah, he get one the Saturday night and then get one Thursday. Mm. Well, I'm a feel it, Rasta, because me and the bridge sit down for a last year, plan out certain things for this year, you know, and... Well, I can't imagine you, because you and him have planned everything. <laughs> well, then, Kuba, 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 and Mookita. Yeah. Inspiration. Kuba, 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 Person come to community development inside the Negril and especially in the Western. You know, Cuba, we don't need NXP. We don't need the place for no accident. Mm. You need the country to get a certain level of black consciousness inside of him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was, that was how him everything. You know, there's something wrong with your phone. Interview. Because in the room, what it is, it's struggle. Yeah. It's struggle where I take place. Among the very people. And the group. And so we're towards him reach and all. So, yeah. we was trying his best to get what is due to the community, to go to the community. Yeah. So, so we're going to have now to MX3. Who are going to run that now? Well, right now, I'm a responsibility, reason with the family, the family trust that responsibility for I man, you know, because oh, I don't yeah. know the level. Yeah, 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 the um, point. Yeah, relationship between my eyes. Mm. But it can be technically set up to certain like, relatives who figure more or less, because they know they're not going to pass, they're not going to say anything to him, you know. So, even them things where they, they, uh, they have a plan, mm. then most of them things still have to continue. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. work still have to go on, well, you know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, the, the work still have to go on. And Saturday night, then Saturday night night, so, I know I still have to go in a uh, Negril, you know, play some music. Yeah, yeah. And then the funeral now is on the 4th. 4th of July. On the 4th of July. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and everything will take place in NXG and then, you know. Of course, yeah. Yeah, and naturally now when I decide now, along with the family because, you know, yeah. I'm and the family were close and other individuals who were part of Cuba team in making what happened February and other time happen, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it wasn't him alone. He would be really the man in front, but in other team, you know? Of course. So, of course. even with that team and the family now, you know, I and I just decide to, well, two nights, two nights are tribute, the Thursday night and the Friday night, the Saturday the funeral, mm. but the, the Thursday night and the Friday night, we have, have band, live music, yeah. people who want to come, you know, make, make presentation and the half of Cuba, people who want to come sing, express themselves in whatever way, you know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's why I plan now for the second and third adjust. So. All right, blessed. All right. We won't give when I see send you. Well? Yeah, man. Yeah. No, I just have to say we won't give what we think in you. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. But from time to time, we will have other little saying on the radio, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. All right, give thanks, brethren. Give thanks. Give thanks. Yeah, Mota. Yeah. Yeah, man, and text you. Yeah. yeah, that was IRV, and IRV is one of the, the brethren where anytime you sit down with Cuba, IRV him talk about. Believe you me, the other day, me and him drive from the airport, the Ningling airport, so 
go out and hotel we open the west end letter and appear i have him at that board especially when come on to the herbs thing the herb the the the, the grandja the growers association there i have him at that board and now the brethren gone and me and him talk about some things towards them extreme musically and all right so yes that's where it go that's where it go this is the cutting edge and I refer my day with you. My day with you. We are start dealing with what we are dealing with now, where we are called the vegetable of the matter. Because you know, we don't work with the meat of the matter business. So the vegetable we have to work with. So the first thing we are going to do now is about three things or four things we are going to do tonight. My average name Omar Johnson, Dr. Omar Johnson, where me and him book up all the while all over the place. You know, me and him depend on the same podium attack. The last time we book up was at this Yoruba village. In a, there's a big Yoruba village there in a, in a, a South Carolina that somewhere around there so. But the bridge is a very powerful bridge and you know, we want to play. We want to play Omar Johnson. Listen carefully. I heard you talking about uh, homosexuality and the fact that you don't believe that people are born gay. Now, like, I, I, I've known people that would argue that there has been scientific evidence to support that there is a difference in the mentality and the mind state of someone gay, uh, physicality-wise. I would agree that there's something different in the mindset and psychological environment of someone who is homosexual or lesbian. Uh, I treat homosexuality and lesbianism as a mental disorder, which is what it has been for all of African history and for all of American history up until 1973. Homosexuality was listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders as a mental disease in this country up until 1973 after the Rockefeller World Population Council and Planned Parenthood International. The same Planned Parenthood that is giving black women abortions all across America, okay, is also the same Planned Parenthood that also contributed to the brainstorming and think tanking that went into using homosexuality as a population control strategy in the black community. And in 1972, the Rockefeller World Population Council with influence, with some coaching by Planned Parenthood International decided that it would be best if homosexuality would no longer be treated as a abnormal condition and that it be propagated in the black community as a healthy lifestyle choice. That was in 72. In 1973, at the annual American Psychiatric Association Convention, homosexuality was voted out of the DSM as a mental disorder. So homosexuality has only been normal in America for about 37 years. In 1974, Secretary of State Henry Kissinger penned a a national security memorandum called NSSM 2000. It was a population control document that looked at that looked specifically at strategies to control the black population rate across the world. It specifically named a handful of African countries, including Nigeria, that would be specifically targeted for po with population reduction, and it also discussed population reduction here in America. And although it did not specifically list homosexuality as a strategy, it talked about healthy sexual practices, it talked about birth control, and it talked about alternative lifestyle modifications that should be introduced into communities across America, specifically the black community, to reduce our population. White supremacy has three evil faces. The first face is white skin supremacy, where it teaches black people to worship color, where it teaches light skinned people that they're better than dark skinned people, and where certain dark skinned people who can also be light skinned supremacists mistreat their light skinned brothers and sisters because they assume that they have a superiority complex when the truth of the matter is they have an inferiority complex. You have religious supremacy, where black people have been taught by white people and Arabs that you are supposed to force your religious beliefs on other people because that's the way they were forced on us and Africa. And then you have homosexual supremacy, which is the coming age of social order in the black community, where any black person, particularly black men, in order for you to be successful as an entrepreneur, as an athlete, as an entertainer, 
as a clergyman, okay, you're going to have to bend over and have sexual relations with a homosexual male to prove that you are still the white man's bitch. So white supremacy and homosexuality is a, is a, is connected. Yes, yes, without a without a doubt. White supremacy and homosexuality are connected. In fact, when you study slavery, you'll find that homos, homosexual acts by white slave masters with black slaves was rather frequent. But it wasn't talked about a lot, particularly when the slave narratives were written after slavery, when the interviews were done by the government and other entities, because as you would imagine, no man wants to admit that he was raped by another man. So homosexuality has a long legacy in the black community. I don't mean to insist that most white people are gay. I don't believe that, okay? But homosexuality is an outgrowth of Greco-Roman culture, where most of the uh, philosophers, most of the religious leaders, most of the uh, political leaders were all gay. That's why Roman Catholic priests aren't allowed to have sex with women, because women were considered to be the symbolic representation of Satan. That's why the woman made Adam eat from the tree in the garden. And so she became a handmaiden of the devil, if you believe in those types of religious stories. I don't believe in religious fairy tales, okay? But this is what we are taught. And as a result of that, in Roman Catholicism, because the woman is dirty, because she's evil, you don't have sex. And so it is natural for humans to want to exercise that sexual impetus. And so since you can't have sex with a woman because she's the devil, then you have sex with men. And there's also a relationship between homosexuality and pedophilia, especially in Greco-Roman cultures. You will see that a lot of the gay white men in Greco-Roman culture not only had sex with other men, they had sex with little white boys. And that's why when you look at a lot of the paintings of white gods from Greece and Rome, you see a lot of little boy angels around those gods. That's because those gods were pedophiles. And they would have sex with the little boy angels when they wasn't administering duty to the universe. Do you think that there is any difference between male uh, homosexuality and female lesbianism? Lesbianism and black women is intimately connected with a hatred for black men. It's also intimately connected in some systems for a hatred for black womanhood. We have to remember that the black woman was masculinized at the same time that the black man was emasculated. So a lot of black women feel that they can never embody what it truly means to be beautiful, what it truly means to be feminine. So many of them have decided to live their lives as men the same way many many black men who feel that they can never embody what it truly means to be masculine, they have chosen to live their lives as women. But for most of our sisters, I find, and the lesbian sisters who I know and have done work with, for most of them, it's a rejection of black manhood for the hatred, the rape, the molestation, the domestic violence that they've seen their mothers and other adult women in their life undergo and certain experiences that they have had with the men themselves. A lot of lesbians who I know were sexually molested as little girls by men who they loved and trusted. So unlike many of my brothers and sisters, I don't believe they should be ostracized, mistreated, rounded up and killed. As I said, homosexuality and lesbianism is a mental disorder and it can be cured and treated just like any other mental disorder. You can cure a homosexual, you can cure a lesbian. It's not a biological disease, it's psychological. And the reason why a lot of black people think they were born that way is the same reason why a lot of black people think they're inferior to white people. You've been going around thinking and believing something so long that it becomes your reality. It's not true reality, it's your reality. They're not born that way, there's, there's very little proof to substantiate that. Most of the so-called evidence that is out there, because there's no conclusive proof, there's only evidence it's being sponsored by homosexual groups. So it's already biased because it's being put out by people who are trying to advance, you know, their own set of beliefs. The bottom line is this. Forget nature and nurture. The bottom line is this. Is it advantageous for our black women, for so many black men to be gay? Period. Only one out of every four black women gets married. So if you got one out of every four black men becoming homosexual, how does that help our system? How does that help the community? How does that help our truth? How in the hell do you prepare for a war with white supremacy where most of your men want to have sex with the white man he's supposed to be fighting? Ari of AM. Thought provoking. Always smoking. Lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. That have much room. I'm going to come and stir up the pot again with this gear thing business and gear thing business again. You know them really? 
man and man are married and all them something there and why well, you talk hey me I listen to one 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 speech by Farrakhan if you hear of oh, Farrakhan style Obama no believe you me you don't think the chronic style of Jesus Christ to you when the Obama when, when Farrakhan don't style of Obama me I tell you uh. We lie about God when that's not true. People who are trying to subjugate another people and turn them into slaves, not just physically but mentally, then uh, they certainly would try to uh, teach them that God looks like me. A lot of people say it doesn't matter what Jesus looked like, it doesn't matter what God looked like or other deity. But the thing is, if it did not matter what Jesus looked like, why don't they show what the original paintings and pictures of Jesus look like? Why don't they show what the original paintings and pictures of the disciples look like? Because that's very important to know if it doesn't matter. Michelangelo was told by the Pope to put the picture of the Holy Family on the, on, on the roof of the chapel. Michelangelo said he that and the Pope specifically told him to make it European. Michelangelo explained to him that there are no models of a European holy family. And so he said, you'll think of something, and he did. He used his, his family. We thought the only guy we had was the one that white people gave us, which was Jesus, okay? And he looked like them. And uh, when we saw them, psychologically, we were transferred that that was deity. If it really was unimportant what he looked like, then why didn't he look like some of the other, the majority of the people on earth? Why would he look like the people who are the minority race on the entire earth? We're not the minority. People always ask me, why do the black church not get rid of the white Jesus and put a blue black Jesus in place with a nappy head? Because black people would stop coming. And not only did they hide the color of religious figures throughout Europe, they would hide the colors of other very important people, especially royalty in Europe. A lot of old paintings in Europe, they clearly show African-looking deities. They show the black Madonna and child. This is all throughout Europe. They show black pictures of Jesus. They show African-looking disciples all over Europe. In everything that you're looking at in the, the Roman Catholic Church today is the exact copy of what they got from Egypt. The high priests regular priests, you got the cardinals, you got the bishops, and then you got the, got the pope at top. So you had the pharaoh, you had the high priest, you had the priests, and so you have the same type of, of categorization of people as, they, as they're placed in the temple, but their purposes and what they were telling was different. When racism rose, because racism was a system, and prior to the system of racism evolving, as a necessary instrument for the maintenance and protection of the European genotype, Europeans, for many intents and purposes, I would say just about worshiped African people. First three popes were black. You have one named Saint Victor, you have one named Saint Gelasius, you have one pope named Saint Matthias. There was another brother named Saint Benedict, who was a, a patron saint in Europe, well known throughout Italy. Militatus was a black pope. Militatus was the Pope during um, the Council of Nicaea. And we've had these brothers who were worshipped throughout Europe and Italy, and we don't talk about it in America, but they're well known in Europe. You, you have one brother, Saint Maurice, who's a, a, a well-known martyr and a, and a religious figure throughout Europe, and you see his statues all over the place. Many of those who early on helped to formulate what is modern-day Christianity in Greece and Rome were also African. When you look at Christianity, you're dealing with the Amen priesthood that's coming directly out of uh, ancient Kemet. You're dealing with the rites and rituals of Osiris, the passions of Osiris, the idea of the resurrection of the dead and his son coming forward, Heru, as his living testament to his life. Aset, who the Greeks call Isis, is the the, uh, the the essence of who Mary is. Um, Nebetet, who is her sister, is who Mary Magdalene is. So that when you look at Christianity, I mean, even when you look at the word uh, Chris or Karas, you're dealing with Kares. Ka means spirit and rest means to rise. The Romans learned your, the passion of Osiris through the Greek. And the Greeks learned it through the Chemites or the Africans from Egypt. So that it was just a, a retelling of the same story, superimposing things that they thought they knew. And that becomes what we today call 
of Christianity. Judaism, that is Atonism. That comes directly out, out of the, the, the river, uh, Api or Nile. And uh, that is why Moses himself was said to be uh, initiated into the priesthood of ancient Egypt. In fact, today, if you were to go to Africa and talk to the children who've been Christianized, they will tell you that their ancestors covenanted with devils. And this is why black people are in the condition they are today. So come turn to Christianity, and of course you turn to the to the to the oppressor's religion, and then you you eat the gruel that they give you, and at the bottom it says Jesus saved you. Of course you're conditioning that person for another thousand years. The falsehood of Christianity has taken a toll on black relationships because really when when women are taught, or in women and men, but when you're taught as a female that God and Jesus is white, you're going to look at whites as a, somewhat of a savior figure and you're going to look at the, the men in your life a little differently try to just work on that more we need to stop going to church every sunday trying to get along with them and try to get along with the people at home some people leave home mad but they go to church and go in there and then they love the pastor and they love jesus because there's no accountability jesus ain't gonna say Pull your dress down. Come in off the street. Go clean up the house. You know, Jesus ain't going to tell them that. And if he do, they ain't going to listen to that. Of course, we all hope that our loved ones will always be safe. But just hoping won't protect your family. The United States was... You know, you came from these primitive, savage people who had no history. And everything you are, we made you. Strip the African of his knowledge of himself. You can then replace that knowledge with any falsification of consciousness you desire. Once you take from me my knowledge of myself, you can then tell me those lies. To get someone to actually think that someone else is inferior, you have to raise that type of mentality to a religious level. America has done all of these terrible things to black people, and then they complain when we do it to ourselves. We're mirroring what they have always done to us since we got off those boats. It's easy to sit up somewhere and talk with black people about black people. But it's not so easy to have to sit up and look at white people's face and talk to them about white people. Now that's what I know. See, white ain't a color, it's an attitude. And you got to have big bucks to do that. My mom used to say, the darker, work harder. The, the, the darker you are, the harder you have to work, the smarter you have to be. Folks were breastfed on racism. Breastfed on it. If you're talking about a problem in the world and you're not dealing with white supremacy, you ain't talking about the problem. There's never been a real dialogue in America about race because whenever we start to talk about race, the conversation will venture into well, what's wrong with black people. White people did whatever they wanted to do to black people. So what are the rules? white supremacy, not the other way around. It's not a generic system that we can all participate in. It's a system that's anti-human, right? We got to come back to our fundamentals, something that's more socialized, something that's dealing with our communities, right? A communal system. That comes from our African culture, right? And I think that has to be pushed forward. Even 
even though we're doing some things within capitalism to survive, we're never a part of this. And we cannot afford to be, and should not even try to be. What we do here in terms of survival is a means to an end. Again, like I said, capitalism, imperialism, and white supremacy must be and will be destroyed. The whole world got it on a hot plate right now. They're not going to win. You know, AFRICOM got to go. Their, in, their interest for invading our mother continent is to rape it. It's the Berlin Conference Part 2. So trying to participate in the capitalist system, we're basically going to be playing a hand in that. And we can't. That's the highest level of betrayal is to be part of this capitalist system. So I think it must be clear when we talk about solutions, to talk about political education. Okay. Our people need to understand these terms. We can't just say, I'm going to buy into this. I want to be a capitalist. I'm a black capitalist. I can sell anything to who I want. No, you can't. We don't need a parallel economic system where we support these crackers to say we support our own. We support our own. And not just here. They talked about a global economy, a pan-African one. That's what we're looking for, pan-Africanism. And pan-Africanism is also a political system. It's anti-imperialist, unapologetic. We must be. Sure did, yeah. Now it's, now it's got to stop giving them white girls passes, that N-word, too. So when we talk about calling people out, yo, we got to call them out, bro. If you ain't speaking toward our people's liberation on your record, shut up. Real talk. You've been around, you too old, you know better. We need some real things. You better put some black faces on them tennis shoes, some black star line, so we can walk to freedom or run. Other than that, man, I'm not paying for it. You know what I'm saying? Come back we cannot emulate the white and the colorist materialism. Ain't no future in that. At all. The black independent schools, yo, that's where it's at, man. Instead of opening up a little funny restaurant and a shoe store, let's get these schools popping. Hiry FM. Thought provoking. Always smoking. Lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. Yes. No, you see the next clip we're going to play, you know? If you care, just think in your mind, say it's not America. I'm really referred to, but it's that general thing amongst black people when it comes out to the music. And rap music, just like DJ, we call dance hall music. Because if you could have seen the clip, you'd have seen him put even Vibes Cartel picture with the other rapper them. Just like how you hear um, Mick Jagger say, him two favorite rapper them is Jay-Z and Vibes Cartel. The only thing that, him have listened to Vibes Cartel 100 times, you understand what Vibes Cartel has said. But, the, this next clip I talk about the effect of the music, of rap music, and we can't just suppose what we call DJ music when we are listening to it. We can't say the man at about the effect of this music on black people. Listen. Greetings, viewers, NYC Resistance. About a week ago, I posted a video entitled Jewish Finance Gangster Rap Music is Psychological Warfare. So if you haven't watched that video, um, I suggest you watch that one first and then watch this one because this is the follow-up to that video. i say about two weeks ago I was watching a documentary called The Tanning of Hip Hop. And in this documentary, you had different people talking about how rap music is so influential that it caused people to go out and buy whatever they put inside the music videos. If they put jewelry in the music video, people ran out and wanted to buy that jewelry from the person that the rappers were telling them to buy it from. If they put liquor in a music video, that particular liquor would jump off the store shelves. If, the, if a certain rapper wore a certain clothing or a certain name brand clothing, everybody was running into the, into the stores looking for that name brand. Same went for footwear, same went for vehicles, they even accredited Barack Obama being elected president to a whole bunch of rappers getting behind him and promoting him through music videos and um, different ads like Vote or Die or Rock the Vote, you know, stuff like that. As I watch this documentary, I wonder, are they going to talk about the negative effects it has on black men and black boys? I mean, if they're admitting that rap music is so influential that it can, it can make people go out and buy certain things and do certain things 
and like certain people, then why in the world wouldn't they equate it to the black on black crime, the drug dealing, the the murdering, the killing, the self hate, black people hating each other, black people not trusting each other. All of these themes are portrayed in the videos and perpetrated in the videos. All, all of these themes about hating one another, killing one another, you know, like what to buy, what to wear, you know, money ain't a thing. You know, throwing money up in the air. After you earn your money, you take it and you throw it up in the air. Like brainwashing people to do foolishness, to be stupid and careless with their money. Are they going to talk about what rappers portray in their music videos? You know, and I mean, the whole documentary played itself out and they made no mention of this. I was like, wow, here it is. You had black rappers. You had black entrepreneurs. You had Caucasian business owners who were CEOs of Cadillac Corporation saying, yes, we sold re a record number of Cadillac Escalades simply because we placed that vehicle in music videos. You had the Gap paying LL Cool J to promote their clothing line, you know, to promote their, their shopping at the Gap. And I mean, they never made a mention of how influential it is on the, on the black mind. Here they are admitting that rap music is a form of brainwashing, you know, um, social engineering, conditioning, but they never mention the, the violent, the violence that is um, portrayed inside these rap videos and in the lyrics of, of these songs. And I'm like, yo, this is clear proof that rap music is being used to destroy and undermine the black race, to cause the black race to want to self-destruct and destroy themselves. This this music is like a virus. It enters your mind and it reprograms you to destroy yourself and to destroy each other. If you watch nothing but negativity all day or listen to negativity all day, there's no way you can live a positive life. And today's music, that's all it promotes is violence, jealousy, self-hate, hating other people that look like you and nobody else, um, materialism, and just a whole bunch of other evil. And you got y'all gotta understand that a people's entertainment is their culture. When you're not working, what you do in your spare time to entertain yourself and have fun, if it's listening to something that's negative but masked in a way that it looks appealing and looks attractive to you, then that's what you wanna do. Because when we watch these these rap videos, you know, the rappers are wearing a whole bunch of jewelry. They're surrounded by a bunch of random, beautiful women that aren't their girlfriend or their wives, promoting promiscuousness. A lot of times, there's guns, there's violence towards other black people in these videos. And this is what we're soaking up and drinking in. And a lot of people are emulating it because they've been programmed to think that that's the way to live. Some Somehow, you're going to derive fun and excitement out of being just like these people. You see, so when our youth go out in the street and they wear their pants down at their ankles because they saw a rapper on stage with his pants down to his knees thinking that it's cool and that's how you get the girls and that's how you get well liked, you know, and um, dressing like this somehow is going to bring you wealth as it did the rapper, you know, they learned the hard way that all it does is bring the attention of the police. All it does is give the police an excuse to mess with you in the street and put you into a corporate owned cage so they can profit from your incarceration. You see, once you're in jail, they force you to work. They force you to make slave goods at pennies a day. If you don't work, they put you in solitary confinement. You see what I'm saying? And that's just that's all because you want to follow the lifestyle of a rapper that in these music videos, he appears to be successful. He appears that he, has, he doesn't have a care in the world. He has endless money. He has beautiful women that don't really care about him, that are just there as long as he has money. They don't like you for you. They don't care nothing about your brain. They're only with you because of what you have, because of the material things that you have. You know what I mean? When somebody really likes you, they like you for your mind. They like you for who you are as a person. And that person is never going to leave you because you're uniquely you. No one could ever be you. So if that person loves you for you, then you don't ever have to worry about losing that person. 
But if somebody loves you only for your money, as soon as your money's gone, they're gone. You see what I'm saying? Because anybody can have money. There's nothing unique about you having money. Because anyone can have it. You know what I mean? So we we have to teach our youth that gangster rap music or anything, whether it be music videos or movies, anything that promotes violence and constantly shows black people in a negative light is a form of psychological warfare, is an attack on you by the enemy. The enemy will not finance anything that portrays you in a positive light. Or if they do, it's very minimal. It's very little. You, you have to go by numbers. You have to go by the majority. Because that's all that the mind retains. That's all that the mind keeps is what it sees the most. So if you see a lot of gangster rap videos with black people killing each other and selling drugs and throwing their hard-earned money up in the air like they don't care about it and buying four or five thousand dollar bottles of champagne just to pour it over one another... You know, and promoting that, promoting waste, then the mind is going to retain that when you only see just a few couple television shows where a black person is a doctor. You know, you might see one one little show here and there because that that's very minimal. The, the mind doesn't remember that. The mind sees it as I'll have a better chance of being successful if I follow the lifestyle of this rapper. And being taught that going to jail is not a big thing. All these rappers that they rap about, I'll go to jail, I'll kill you. You know, jail ain't no thing. I, I, I'll do a bit. You know, like being put into a six by nine cell is cool. That's something that that you can live with. Having five or ten years stolen from your life while making some Caucasian that is profiting from your incarceration rich. Somehow, some way, that's cool. That makes you a real man. No, being intelligent. Acquiring knowledge. Most importantly, acquiring power. Power is the ability to keep what you have without someone taking it from you. Money is nothing if you don't have the power to keep it. But you have the enemy telling you that money is the most important thing in this world when it's not. Yo, Ricky, y'all watch the West Indies versus Australia match tomorrow? But most, but you know, see, there's a bigger match today, right? What do you mean? Wednesday is Digicel Midweek Bonus Day. Top up with $200 to $1,000 and Digicel will match your top up with bonus credit to call our text. Then is power and force, okay? So, I mean, family, I'm not hating on rappers. A lot of these rappers are very talented, they're very gifted, but their skills, their talents, their linguistic skills are being used to destroy their own people. You rappers that are promoting all this violence and the destruction of people that look up to you. Because these kids when they when they see you, they look at they look up to you as their role model. They say, I want to be just like you. I want to live in that beautiful mansion. I want to drive a nice car. I want to have a be- I want to have beautiful women like you have. But they'll do anything to live that lifestyle. A lot of you rappers that you, you come out and you say you got where you got by selling crack cocaine in the hood. Now, all of a sudden, you're shaking hands with Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, and you're wearing a suit. You see what I'm saying? That's not right. Because the average person that does time in jail and, and comes out, he doesn't get a second chance. He can't even get a job at McDonald's. But you're saying that you got where you got committing illegal activity, and a lot of these children out here are following your lead. They're following your blueprint that you gave them. I mean, you, some, you, sometimes you literally call it a blueprint and they think that that's how they're going to reach where you got. I think you have a responsibility to to just tell the truth and do the right thing and stop leading your, your own people off a cliff. Stop letting the enemy use you by giving you large amounts of money to Give your people these false ideas that if you do this and this and that, you could be successful like me. And then take off that hood attire and put on a suit and be around all these successful billionaires and own all these businesses and, and just go legit. No. You can't go you, you can't go legit. You end up in prison. You end up in jail with no second chance. They use you for your talents and then they throw you in jail. That's what they're gonna do to all of you. They're going to use you to to promote this lifestyle of self-destruction on your own people. And when they're done with you, they're going to stuff you in jail with all the other people that you brainwashed into going to jail. We've seen it happen again and again and again. And they don't forgive you once they're done with you. 
You see what I'm saying? When they're finished using you to fulfill their agendas, they wring you out like a dirty cloth and they throw you in the trash. They don't even put you up to dry. They just throw you away. Okay? So, I mean, I mean, it, I just hate to see these little kids walking around the street with these headphones and you see them bopping their head and, 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 and dancing to the, and, I mean, enjoying this music because it always has a nice catchy beat. And sometimes it takes you months to realize the lyrics. I mean, I've I've listened to songs months on end, just listening to the hot beat, without even paying attention to the lyrics. And when I've heard the when I when I finally slowed it down to listen to the lyrics, I'm like, yo, is that that's what they were saying all this time? Literally being brainwashed and not knowing you're being brainwashed. You have to pay attention to what you're listening to because your subconscious is deciphering it whether your conscious mind is or not you see what i'm saying your subconscious is it knows everything that's going on and it's saying oh word this is what you do you sell drugs huh you have sex with all these women and that's what's going to make you that's what's going to make us happy huh and that person looks at you the wrong way you punch him out you know with not thinking about the consequences that you might go to jail you know Oh, oh, don't trust somebody that looks like you, but trust somebody who doesn't look like you. Trust people of another race just because they have money and just because they smile in your face. I'm not saying all court cases are bad. I'm just saying that a lot of court cases that have money and power, how do they, how do they use that power? Case in point, when Steven Spielberg was going to make a movie about the Tuskegee Airmen, uh, Red Tails, he went to Hollywood to get $80 million to finance this movie. They would not give him the money. They would not finance the movie because the movie portrayed black people in a positive light. Red Tail was about the Tuskegee Airmen and their contributions during World War II. So Steven Spielberg had to go reach into his own pocket and finance that movie himself. You see? Because Hollywood does not want to make movies that portray black people in a positive light. Okay? Even... Denzel Washington talked about how a bunch of Jewish people called him into a room and told him this. I got a part in a movie in 1986. I called it the nigga they couldn't kill. Oh. Yeah, he was supposed to be uh, he raped a white woman and they, they, they tried to electrocute him but it didn't work. And he became sort of a, a cult of hero. No, not that one. That was the other one. And then they tried to hang him and they tried to do all this stuff. And I had a lot of training day in me. And there were some uh, Jewish people in the, in the, in the audition. And, and I said, yeah. They said, no, it's funny. It's like they hang him and then they can't. I said, yeah, like you bring some Jewish people into a room and, you, and you, they think it's a shower, but it's gas. Oh. And they said, right. I said, right, that ain't funny. So to me, it wasn't funny about putting a rope around my MF and neck. Either. I made a point. The guy was like, who the hell is this little nigga talking like this? So anyway, make a long story long. I, I called Sidney and I was sick because he told me to call him. If I, you know, I call, I was sad. I said, man, they offered me $600,000 to play the nigga you, they, they couldn't kill. And he said, I'm not going to tell you what to do. He said, I'm not going to tell you that, Denzel. He says, but I can tell you this. The first two or three or four films you do in this business will dictate how you're perceived in this yes. business. Mm -hmm. So you make a decision. You know, he didn't tell me what to do, and I give him credit for that. And I turned it down, and six months later, I got Cry Freedom. Uh. And got an Oscar nomination. So... It could have gone an entirely, you know, you, you never know. Mm -hmm. It could have gone, my whole yes. career could have gone an entirely different way. Well, in a different way. Okay, yeah. Miss Davis. And all the Jewish people now, be <laughs> just making a point. But I was dead serious about yeah. that because they were laughing. Everything. Like, oh, no, it's funny. They electrocute him and then they, mm -hmm. I could just see the poster with me with a rope around my neck. <laughs> you know, that's, I just had dreams about it. Like, I have a question. <laughs> that wacky guy they tried to kill. <laughs> So when I make these videos, it's not me trying to cre create problems amongst the races. It's me trying to help my own people and not see us be destroyed because this enemy, once again, I am not generalizing Caucasians because every Caucasian does not have power. Every Caucasian is not behind this. So when I talk about 
what I'm talking about. I don't want someone who is delivering pizza or a garbage man or some Caucasian that has a job where his, his job isn't affecting the lives of black people. I'm not talking about you. I'm not referring to you. So why you would want to jump in and tell me you're offended and try to silence me when you know this is destructive to the black mind? And I'm trying to wake black people up to save themselves and stop being influenced and poisoned by this by this trash. You know, by this psychological warfare. Why you would try to, to, to halt my efforts is beyond me. So I'm going to start to see you as an enemy if you try to stop me from waking up my own people and, and making them realize that they're being brainwashed, they're being influenced by this gangster rap music, by these violent movies, by these fake reality TV shows that don't reflect actual reality. Okay, this is not our reality. This has nothing to do with us. This is a facade. It's not real. It's fake. It's phony. It's plastic. Okay? Everything that they're promoting in these different forms of so-called entertainment is to destroy us. Okay? They're Trojan horses meant to look glamorous, but when you reenact it in real life, it's going to, it's going to destroy you. Everything is to promote jealousy and mistrust amongst us. Everything. From even in the early morning shows, Ma Maury Povich and um, Jerry Springer, the paternity test stuff. Okay? It, it makes you think twice about your own relationship. And anybody who doesn't, who says, no, I don't think about it, is a liar. There's no way you could be watching all this stuff all day about um, mistrust and you not start to wonder if there's a reason to mistrust in your own relationship. And this is done by design to implant these insecurities in your mind. So you start to question the people who you should trust and trust the people who you should question. It's your enemy's way of flipping everything inside out and upside down. I really don't want to be rambling, but this is this is so important, man. This is this is what is destroying us. This is the only reason that you see the youth behaving the way they're behaving out here in the streets. There's they're taking on this lifestyle because they see it as a way out of poverty. They see it as a way of being happy. They look at these people in these music videos and they sincerely think that materialism and money is going to make them happy. No. Love is going to make you happy. Having a circle of people that care about each other and you trust one another. That's what's going to make you happy. Okay, not the money. Trust me. Nothing you could buy in the store is going to make you happy. Take my word for it. Okay? I'm not some bum that hasn't had anything. I've seen a lot of things. I've been a lot of places. And trust me, money, material things do not make you happy. Nothing that's on this earth or nothing that was produced out of a factory, to be more precise, can make you happy. Nothing that came off of a, of a conveyor belt can make you happy. Human beings make you happy. Nature makes you happy. Being healthy makes you happy. Okay? Stop falling for these lies that a bunch of money, a big house, an expensive car, looking like you're, looking like you're rich, but not actually being rich, but having no real material wealth, but just appearing like you're rich is not happiness, folks. Just, just please stop falling for these brainwashing lies. They're destroying us. All right? I don't mean to sound pathetic because I know some of y'all are going to say, yo, F that. You know I mean, I'm going to do me and this and that. And this might be the last warning you get. Some of y'all might go out there on the corner and go sell drugs tonight and end up, you know, in that man's cage. Right where he wants you. That's what all this rap music is about. That's why the enemy is financing it. You know? That's why Jewish Zionists are financing this. To destroy you. They want you in cages. Okay? Black people aren't financing this. Okay? That's the truth of it. Black people are not financing your destruction. Just like we're not financing the, the genetically engineered food. We're not financing fluoride being dumped in the water. We're not financing all these trillion dollar wars. We're not financing the chemtrails to destroy the environment and to manipulate the weather. We're not financing society's morals being destroyed. We're not financing none of that. Black people are a people of peace on average. Peace and love. The fathers and mothers of civilization and now here in America we have 
an enemy trying to paint us to be criminals because of the entertainment mediums that he finances. All these music videos and rap songs and violent movies, a lot of it wouldn't be possible without the money of Jewish, of the Jewish controlled entertainment industry. It would not be possible. Okay? And whenever you come with something positive, he don't got the money for it. He will not finance it. You know, the black image has to be negative. Because why? Because they want to exterminate us. You know what I mean? You destroy a person's image before you destroy them. They do it the same way time and time again. So, you know, I, I've touched as many points as I, I can remember. Because this ain't no script. You know, I don't have a teleprompter I'm reading off of. Everything I say comes out the heart. So, you know, forgive me if I don't talk like um, your nightly news anchor or reporter. But, you know, everything I say is because I don't want to sit here and watch the demise of the black race as we're being called drug dealers and criminals and and the biggest murderers on the planet. Ari of M. Thought-provoking. Always smoking. Lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. Yes, you hear the man talking about how the music affect black people to become enemies of them own self. And it's a serious thing because we, we can't just propose what happening in Jamaica as it relates to the music and the, the decadent behavior of our young people listening to this music where people are saying the music now have nothing to do with nothing. You know, it's the parents, them. The listening is the most powerful psychological remembrance that people have. Listening. Yes, listening, seeing, those senses is, 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 a, is, is the most powerful thing that human beings have. And most of what you know or feel come through one of those senses. Them say five senses you have. Most of what you know or feel come from one of those senses. Seeing and listening. Very powerful. Very, very powerful. And if somebody in the right mind can keep saying that the music now have nothing to do with nothing, well, boy, I mean, I know. Because music influences people. As a matter of fact, a whole heap of the artists them now come like some little mimic, like zombie. One artist say one thing and all of them jump on the thing. If them to the tune it, them go go say the same thing like it's the first artist. And 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 go and say unique. Me not see no unique artist about the place right now, you know. When it come on to the dance hall thing, you know, because it just take one sister to go up on stage looking like say she got go go. Because she had follow Rihanna nakedness. Rihanna go up on the stage. We I mean, never say half naked again, you know. Full naked. And then now them take it up over here, so and it gone and everybody start dressed the same way. I don't know see nothing unique about that. I don't see nothing unique about that. But believe you me, the the, the, the prejudice is right on time, right on the tip. Say, yeah, the music. The music, there's something that is pushing this thing for me. Jamaica was once the maker of consciousness. And this consciousness come out through the music. And if people say the music now have nothing to do with nothing, look at where, where reggae music do. With some little white youth and some little Japanese youth. Look where the music project, how far the music go. To make some little white youth in a room and talk about Rastafari. Me just there in Finland and... Me don't know, Finland they way up near the North Pole there and some white people, I, I, I mean, I will leap at them. I flash them locks and I say, Rastafari, that me I say, all right, all right. And then the music break through that barrier and go over there, so. So you can just imagine now the dance hall music and... Most of the most of the dance hall artists them. I mean now all about nothing. Most of the dance hall artists them have negative connotations in the music. Negative lyrics negative lyrics. Most of the dance hall artists them. 
And me I say, them same dance all that wrestling say, boy, right now, the music now have nothing to do with nothing. How can people think that? How can people say that? You have to me say, you have to me say the young people them in Jamaica get so naive and stupid that them not understand the power of music. You have to me say the young people them in Jamaica get so stupid that them not understand say what them do today have a direct relationship with what them what will happen tomorrow. How them not understand that? But you know something? Wisdom is not something you can learn, you know. Wisdom is something you experience. You can't get knowledge from a certain way, but you have to experience. Wisdom is an experience. And the weirdest thing about it is that you would see an artist that said, see a mad, madness today. And 10 years down the line, him go out like him, nobody that said a madness there. <laughs> it's like him get converted. Oh, I yell up Ninja Man, you know, you know so we baptize Ninja Man, a, a rebel salute, and me tell him on the stage, you know, me say, Ninja Man, we are watching, you know, you know when I come go like you are, when, when, when we used to call himself, well, my Christian, Dead Man, where him and a Dead Man still in him, and Ninja Man, but we did not baptize him already, that don't see him move from the baptism, as a matter of fact, I see him get very political from the PNP stage, and say, man, a PNP in a JLP, but him from the poor PNP stage, but I like what I say, I want to yell up Ninja Man, you know. Yes. Ninja Man, remember, when we tell you about the stage, you know, at Rebel Salute. I remember I talked to, to Vibes Cartel, long as I saw 20 minutes was I talking to Vibes Cartel. I time it, you know. Time it. And I don't, and I, 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 I hope somebody will listen to me when no Vibes Cartel, you know. To say, Vibes Cartel, remember, say, when we tell you is, when me get hole, you know, and I, in a rocking chair and I have teeth in my mouth. And it never even take me in a rocking chair. I have no teeth in my mouth if it happen, happen to you. It's a weird thing. It's a weird thing, you know. Because you sit up there and listen to me, you know. And every time I talk to anything, I'm smiling and I say, Bridget, you see how when me, you see how 10 years time, 20 years time, when me not have no teeth in my mouth, and in a rocking chair and I cringe up, cringe up, so. Yeah, what's what I say? I watch ya. I still have my teeth in my mouth. I mean, I was in a rocking chair yet. And look what happened. So, believe you me. Believe you me. It takes one's own experience. And the weirdest thing is that you can't put certain reasoning to a youth, you know. But it's as far as the youth can go. It will go. Because it will not reach tomorrow yet and you don't pass tomorrow so sometimes you really have to just say it and move and allow him to do what he do until because I don't care what you say him not going to hear what you say because he say yeah that's not my reality but really and truly it's a serious thing this is the cutting edge the time is one minute past twelve brothers and sisters this is Jan. Join us with respect for our national anthem. Let us stand and defend this one. Peace and love. Thank you. Eternal Father, bless our land. Who guide us with thy mighty hand. Keep us free from evil. Great 
We're there with you. Here we go again. We go again. Or talk about like it now and go again. I will be at the raga. You know, a lot of people, in order to get rid of their own guilt, they will try to minimize the significance of slavery and Jim Crow. They'll say things like, well, I wasn't there. That was a long time ago. You weren't there. Why are you upset about it? Other people were enslaved, too. Other people were treated badly, so why are you whining about it? So there are all types of excuses and, and things people say now to minimize the significance of African-American slavery and Jim Crow. One thing that makes me mad is when people say it's not that bad. It's like me kicking you in your teeth, and I'm the one saying it's not that bad. You got kicked in the mouth. It doesn't matter whether you were around during slavery. It doesn't matter if your ancestors owned them or not. What matters is this. You benefit today from the enslavement of African people. And everyone who looks like you benefits in some way, shape, or form from the accrual of resources of wealth and a financial status that was reaped on the backs of my ancestors. A common narrative now is that black people shouldn't be upset because Africans enslaved other Africans and there are a lot of holes in that theory. The thing is, there is no type of comparative slavery coming out of Africa. African people never had a slave-based economy. African people in Africa never had a shipbuilding economy based on slavery. They never had an insurance economy based on slavery. Slavery had a different cut to it in uh, Africa. European slavery is the slavery that is the unforgivable slavery. It's the most vicious. When blacks sold other blacks into slavery, they thought it was the kind of slavery that they had. Well, you had to maybe work in the field. Your family had to live over here on the side. You couldn't live here. Uh, your children had to go to school after my children. It was things like that. They had no idea it would be the kind of terror that was put upon us here in America. And they didn't come over here and go back and tell. And so they just were able to just keep shipping people through that system. During the European slave trade in Africa, there were some Africans who complied with the Europeans because basically when the Europeans went into Africa, they gave them an ultimatum. Look, we have these advanced weapons. Either you're going to be our slaves or you're going to help us make them our slaves. So you make a choice. So a lot of people were forced to comply with the Europeans. Three things make American slavery different and black oppression different from everybody else's. Number one, it was a process of dehumanization. No other slave in world history was dehumanized, prevented from identifying as a human being. Nobody else. We are the only people in world history who have ever been dehumanized. Number two, your inability to learn was codified as a federal crime. Nowhere in history were slaves not allowed to learn, ever. You could be killed reading a book. You have never seen that in world history. And number three, it's the only oppression where the whole world benefited. Everybody benefited from the enslavement of African people. And nobody did nothing about it. That makes your predicament different. So no matter how much we want to join ranks with the Latinos and the Asians and the Arabs, you have nothing in common with them. In fact, you need to be careful. Because just like with the Civil Rights Movement, they will use you again for your numerical strength and then abandon you at your time of need. They're always trying to find a comparative form of slavery coming out of Africa, and the slavery there, the servitude there, was much different than European servitude. There's a book by an, an African gentleman. This is the first time an African who was captured in Africa and brought over to the New World, this was the first time he got to tell his story from his own perspective. A guy named Oludai Boyano had a book that was a bestseller in the 1700s, and he talked about the difference of being enslaved in Africa and being in servitude in Africa and Europe. He talked about when he was in servitude in Africa, the people, the Africans who had him in servitude, they treated him like an extended family member. They treated him with a certain level of humanity and dignity. And he said once he got to the European slave ships, their slavery was something totally different. He'd never been beaten before. They were beaten on. People were getting raped on the ship. So he specifically stated how barbaric the European slavery was as compared to the African servitude. We have people today who deny that the history itself is even relevant to who we are as a nation of people. And
and to what America represents in the world. There's no America without slavery. There is no economic dominance. There is no greatest American century without the capital produced by the work of black people in this nation. Point of fact. A lot of historians now will try to make it seem like slavery was just this stain on the fabric of America. But in reality, slavery was the fabric of America. Cotton was king. Slavery was the number one game in town. Let's not get it twisted. Right, the special kind of slavery we enacted in America had never been enacted before. And that is to say that not only are you my slave, but your children will be my slave. And your children's 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 will be my slave. In fact, you will never get out of slavery, regardless of how many generations of your unquote family is born in this place that was new and different. Many of the African leaders over in Africa, when they found out what was really happening to enslaved African people, when they found out that they were being taken from Africa and not being brought back, when they found out how inhumane many of the Africans were being treated, many of the African leaders fought the Europeans back, and that's a story that they never like to talk about. One person in particular was a queen, Madame Tenabu, who's a leader in the area we now know as Nigeria. When she found out what they were doing to the Africans, she fought vehemently against the British. So you get this really interesting history, this really interesting narrative that the conservatives tell that basically says Rosa sat down, Martin stood up, he had a dream and we all overcame. And so therefore, since the signs of Jim Crow came down, obviously racism does not exist. Obviously, therefore, this is the land of equal opportunity. Obviously, therefore, when I'm looking at a 40% unemployment rate in the land of opportunity where racism does not exist, then this is because they, these folks are fundamentally structurally flawed. I told a white woman this one time and she broke down crying. I said, are you benefiting off of what your great grandparents did? She said, yes. I said, you know what they did to get that right? She said, yes. I said, are you ashamed of that? She said, yes. I said, but don't you still benefit off of it? She said, yes. Are you willing to give it back? No. <laughs> so what does that make you? You know, the damage has been done. Everyone who has from the... What does that make you? You know, the damage has been done. Everyone who has from the, the levels of what we talk, Caucasian, Nordic, and so forth, no matter what ethnicity they may come from, they can always shave, they can always put on different clothes, and the skin can give them a pass. They can even change their names. But we are immediately identified. There's no way for us to hide who we are. So what have we had to do? We've had to adapt. We've had to even adopt. Or the civil rights struggle, Latinos and Mexicans deliberately stayed out of the civil rights movement. They waited on the sidelines until the benefits of the bill was reaped and then they came out not claiming they were black but were minority in fact one of the reasons the word minority was introduced into the political jargon was to effectively describe people of african descent who didn't want to be african so minority was a catch-all that allowed people to still get the benefits of being a person of color but not having to identify with African people. That's like Hispanics. You see, some Hispanics, many Hispanics, they have brown skin, but they will put on the census white. And if you ask them, why did they put down white? Then they'll say, because white is where the power is. You see, African American people are in a very unique position in this country. Other people are immigrants. This is why they're trying to teach in textbooks today, I just got a, a message the other day where they're trying to teach that African people brought to America during enslavement are being called involuntary immigrants. Because once you get that word immigrant in, 
then you lose the flavor of the fact that we are a nation within a nation that is sovereign. The thing is, people try to say, well, other groups of people were mistreated like African Americans, but that's not true because other groups of people, you couldn't mistreat them because they had a home country to protect them. You couldn't mistreat certain Asian groups of people because they had a home country that would protect them. As a matter of fact, there were some Italian immigrants who were lynched in the late 1800s. Italy almost went to war with the United States based on that, and the United States had to apologize to Italy because of the way they were treating the immigrants. In the late 1890s, I think it was, um, in New Orleans, some Italian sailors were, they thought they did something, and these Italian sailors were lynched. The U.S. government apologized profusely to the Italian government for lynching these Italian citizens, and I believe paid compensation to the victims' families. Oh, we are so sorry. Now, you take that, so at a certain level, you know this mess is wrong. Ari of M, thought-provoking, always smoking, lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. Come on, give thanks to the information flowing, you know. Yeah, man, give thanks, man. Yes, I. We'd love to hear um, Super Hole, the extra kit here to have. Okay. Um, by, by, um, by OJs. Yeah, it's something, the, something the something Bridgen said in the music about the when he was talking about the music. Yeah. He was saying the beat, you know. The beat take you away. Yeah? What? Well, well, get cut off, that's all about the credit done. This is the court today. The kick, the snare, the ayat. Thanks and prayers. How is this? Yeah. I want to give thanks to the eye to the teaching. I must give thanks to the eye and sister Kabu, you know? Yes, I give thanks to Kabu, yes, of course. Yeah, I want the works where to virgin and sister combine and do you know? Yeah. yeah. But I look on still uh, the other day a couple weeks ago. You they have one one Muslim cleric or something like that. Muslim cleric? In a talk about uh like uh, in an interview uh, the, a Muslim brother were in charge of the Caribbean or Jamaica. Oh yeah, Jamaica. yeah, 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 yeah. Caribbean yeah. And, yeah. And I'm like, I'm go down to a pint there where I say that. I'm talking about the Muslim and the Christian. Mm-hmm. And I'm go down to a pint there and say one time when I say, boy, is that um, the Muslim and the Christian are going to unite to fight the Antichrist. Yeah, well, when I say that, well, the two of them have the same ending, you know. Yeah. The two of them have the same ending, which is the ending where Christ come and save everybody. Both the Christian and the Muslim, because the Muslim don't believe in Jesus Christ, that they don't see him as the son of God. Yeah, but my concern is that, who we might call the Antichrist? Who, well, who anti- would... the Antichrist would have been the oppressive system against against Christ's laws and doctrine. Mm. Okay. Yeah, what I call the Antichrist, those who fight against righteousness, fight against the teachings of Christ fight against good and, you know, just all of and evil. That is what I call it. Anti, anti mean against, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah so antichrist means it's against Christ. So he must talk about those who is against Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is what he must say, you know. But, but I don't know when I, when I analyze it, I think, because I'm going to, you know, you know, from the motherland and them, them terms, I and I culture as anti-Christ. Yeah, and yeah, them say it's a evil business. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, it go. Let me tell you, well, well, if I you am. believe in that, and that the Muslim and the Christian believe in, I know. Mm. So yeah, I, I interpret it say, when I, when them, and like you say, it's what them down in the motherland, they know a fight for supremacy. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, both the Christianity and the Muslim down, they fight for supremacy. Yeah. If he's in a due time, and it, both the Muslim, none of them religions that originate in Africa. No, no. no. Good. So I had, I had interpreted it in a few times. Two of them would have come and want to turn them, them evil ammunition, and I and I don't I call it Antichrist. You know, see? It. Yeah, well, I know that. The way they, you think I sell the group, I don't know. 
them are kill out all Muslim to where not adhere to the hardcore Islamic way, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, well, like Sharia and all of them, they don't care, they don't care. If you come and say, I'm, I say like all the black Muslims, them now, Farrakhan, them, they would have just murdered all them people, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because they must say, they are not true Muslim. Mm -hmm. So, you don't know, it goes, fundamentalism is a serious thing. It's like, it's where the Christian them used to do in, a, in a Europe. You know, when you call medieval time, you know, for the, for him say the Pope, and you don't agree with it, you know, just hang your hand, just chop off your head, yeah. right, this all. Man, you speak and then thing. Yeah, man, yeah, man. So the same in Christianity, Muslim, the whole of them really come to come assert them power mm -hmm. over people, you know? Yeah, man. Give thanks, Bridget. Give thanks. Yeah, man. All the better. Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a fight between who for religion right and who for religion right. <laughs> Yes, it's a fight. Who for religion right or who for religion right? The bridging get cut off a while ago with them phone call with them asked with Junior. You know, so never call it and ask with Junior. And since we depend on the slave tune them, we could work with that one here with him now. Yes. It's a simple, keep it simple tonight, Rasta. Um, I just want to tell you thanks, man. Yeah. For the information that you're bringing to the people. Yeah, man. You know, um, and I want to say thanks to Sister Kabu, IWFM, yes. and the whole IWFM crew globally. Yeah, man, give thanks. And, you know, I, I got an autograph copy of that CD you just play. Which one are Del Jones. Oh, Del Jones, um, yeah. Yeah, man, yeah, come here, Del Jones, uh, you know, we used to run from Chicago. As a matter of fact, from them time, then when he used to come to Chicago, Del used to come to the same time. Yeah. And Black History Month come lecture. And um, also, I have an autograph copy of Dr. Omar book. Uh, you know, so most of them chance. people there, them people there, you know, from them time, they're from Chicago days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Trent, so, you know, just just keep keep the message coming through to the people. I yeah, want the people, them are listening. They might listen, they might listen. 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 Listen. All right, listen, listen. Um, you remember a brother um, over there in Chicago that have the bookstore, Shindir and brother that I took you to a long, long time ago. Is he still in Chicago? Does he still have his bookstore? Bridget, I don't know. Oh, you mean, um, yeah, man, yeah, man, Seiko. Seiko. Ed Start, Ed Start, him name, Seiko, yeah. Man, I, I lose him information. I, I'm going to call you tomorrow or the day after. I, I need to re-hook up with a brother. No, but you can't come with him in Chicago. I have to look at the phone book and look for Ed Start. No. No, no, me, me there the you know, Atlanta, me there now, me left Chicago. Yeah, well, me, well, you have to just find Ed Start. It's easier for you find Ed Start over there, so then me go find Ed Start for you right now. Believe you, me. Yeah. Ed uh, well, me I say, keep, keep up the good work, son. Yeah, man. In the, mu the music, I, uh, I'm, like, seriously, um, I learn about, about the, the, the music and, and, and the psychological warfare to Tavistock Institute in England. You know, I, yeah. I went to a lecture from, um, Steve Coakley, I don't know if you ever oh, met Steve Coakley. Yeah, Steve Coakley. Yeah, man, we know Steve Coakley. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Khalid Mohammed. You yeah, know, yeah. I, I listen to all of them, brother. I've been to all of the lectures. So all of the information that you're sharing with the yeah, people yeah, globally yeah. now, yeah, already have there. But I really, I'm really happy, yeah, man, that, yeah. that you're bringing the message to the people. And, I want, and I'm hoping, brother, you're going to take up the plight of the farmers again. So, all right, sir. You know, all right. Give time. Have a move. Have a move. Uh, keep up the good work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surplus Entertainment present Family Fun Day, which is a charity event. Saturday, June 20. I want the man them credit done. So here goes again. A ship, a Portuguese ship coming from Mozambique to, to Brazil. Right off of the coast, they are South Africa. Where the Atlantic meet the Indian Ocean, them find a ship there. Where them say 200 Africans and its crew members drown and them find the ship. I think it's the first slave ship them say. They're going to recover now and they're going to search it and dig it up. All the archaeologists them now going to find out exactly how this thing go, how it run am up, how the boat is set up for all 200 African people. Them say all 200 Africans died on the ship. I don't know how them know say 200 Africans died on the ship. I really need to understand these things. Yes. We can't tell the journey, you know. You know, say a black history month, this. You never know. A <laughs> black history month. Yeah, blessed. One, one, man. Cutting edge. 
Yeah, man. A long time I'm not talking to you, you know? Yeah, well, you have to talk since you're right now. You're coming in at the foolish since you're right now. The last time I talked to you, I'm going to talk to you about Jesus Christ is so right and... Jesus Christ is what? I'm going to talk to you about Jesus Christ. We have to worship the white people in so right and... I hate to say you're not going to live because you're not going to live because you're not going to live I don't remember, but yes. talk where you talk now. Talk yeah, but we, have, we never talk about granulated sugar, you know, and white sugar. So, congratulations, you know. Congratulations, you know. Because we white people, you know, because Con- Jesus Christ has the answer, you know. So, we have to say, we have to say a thing. What? We have to say, if you are a royalty, you're the natural man, don't. Eh? Talk no man, talk where you talk no man, you're real. Ask me, ask the man, if you're a royalty, you're a natural man, don't. If me and what? If you're a royalty, if, if yeah, you're yeah, a yeah, royalty. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Eh. You see the radio where you're behind you, turn it off now, Rasta. If, if you're a royalty, see? Loyalty. Are, if you're a royalty, you're a royalty. If you're a royalty. If you're not loyalty, where you talk? If you're a royalty, you're a royalty. If you're not loyalty. If you're royalty, you're, if you're not royalty, you're what? Yeah. Me no know. Tell me no. You're yeah, not trying man then, man. No true. All right. That, that's what you say. That's what you say. So what? Uh, yeah. So me I tell you, say, for right you now, I and I know that Jesus Christ was a royalty. Okay. So, okay. so I and I come back three times. I come back as, uh, as King James and I come back as Jesus. Right, you know? know. You want know. You see, too many people have vibes now. Me can't tell them who they're talking right now. No, I'm not yeah. talking to you because I'm yeah, not talking to you. I'm not talking to you, good man. Yeah, but you're not talking to me good. You're breaking the vibration of the world show you right now. Believe me. No, I'm not talking to you. Blessed. Blessed man. Yeah, man, that's why. Bless up the eye for the militant job of the idea really. So I'm say. Yeah man, give thanks. But sometimes I wonder if it's just the same people them. I listen to the eye all the time. Or if I have some new people I listen to you more than because trust me, it's like people listen to you and people listen to you, but it's like the message not nah, spreading no motor. Mm-hmm. Why you say that? Yeah man. Why you say not nah, spread? Because when I go up on the street, because I'm an advocate for the ice still. Yeah. So I'm going to say, mm-hmm. I'm a Gordian advocate for African mm-hmm. black people unity and everything. But when you talk to most of the people, it's like, they don't know nothing. You see me, I say? They don't know nothing. Yeah, but I want to tell you, say, I will be people, I will be for youth, I will be up in a song, some Jamaican youth, when I will be up in a foreign and some university when I go. And them say, them used to listen to Cushing Edge. In the early days when they must study at university and you say, Wooly for them. And I must have fact, I will be time when you see me live here. And them see them youth there send for me to come talk at them the university and them students. The whole law faculty in Barbie does that day. The whole youth there, the whole of the youth them just send for me to come over there to talk to them. So, yeah, I know that still, but I want to show you how, how them people are. I talked to a daughter yesterday now. And she had tell her, I said, boy, if God want to use a certain way, you can do this and you can't do She got to the point where she has to right now. If God want you to go, uh, uh, for example, um, Cuba go speak Spanish. He can't just take you up to there and send you to Cuba yeah. and you speak Spanish. Man, I said, that's uh, how you get them thinking there from. Yeah. So I said, if God want you to work for him, he can't do that. Me said, you ever dream of seeing that something like that happen? Yeah. She yeah. said, yes, it can happen. So right now, the colonializing indoctrination is that out of the people, I think. Well, we can tell you something now. You see, when we are doing it so now, and we are doing it for long, you know, you take out the car, but that's the car that's a hundred years. Yeah. Everything happens, how we want it happening. You know. So, but we're not going to stop to, we are saying, how many people are listening, you know, because... How many people are listening, when how many people are listening. So, we're not going to stop to, we are saying, we are catering for the people them who are not listening. We are catering for the people them who are listening. Yeah, that's all. That's what go. Yeah, me even hear some youth from the, from the TV, from the, the, um, the radio tonight, I talk on the show just before you. Yeah. The man, they was like, the man, this and this, 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 this,
and you're a youth over here, 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 you're a we really live in a condition where the songs were sung to the family, not to those individuals in the family. Exactly. So I said, because we, I can't call so much name Bob Marley, yeah. man like Lucian, or man like um, um, Barry Saman. They man they make it to the top and you can't play them on the song in a, any car with your family, in a, any church. You yeah, see that? And they man they make it to the top. Yeah, that's so right. I can't sit out. How the youth them just want to pull up them pocket of money and then them just... Yeah, the table would be a while ago, the brother talked about all the, 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 the rap music. Yeah, man, I listen to all them things. Yeah. I can't sleep right now because I don't sleep on uh, uh, them nights when you're up on the program, you know. Right, there's an idea called you the night where I don't see no night at all. I'm chilling night. <laughs> Yo, man, no I tell you, man, I just want you to continue to do the thing where you're still. No, we don't have to talk to the culture. As I said before, you know, we do we now do the program for the people them who now listen, you know. Because them now listen, them don't know something they're there. We are doing for the program for the people them yeah, who listen. Yeah, but who are the things to spread? This, what yeah, but it, it, it has it spread, it. man. Don't worry yourself, man. Don't worry yourself. It has spread. It, don't worry yourself. Know, if it I never has spread, I can tell you something. At 20 years of the day, on the radio, it might look long, but if it never has spread, who does it have to left already? Because the radio station, you know, that said, no, it's not a program, yeah. It now have no listenership. So if since it now, I know this is the same people who used to listen to it five years ago. I know the same people who listen to it now. You know the same yeah, people. Yeah, but I don't want to grow in a bigger number. Yeah, well you don't know the number. You take a sensor. You don't take no sensors, man. Trust me. You don't take no <laughs> well, you know, just, just for reason, for this street, this church. Yeah. I, I, I bring up man because you have a bad. No man, worry yourself, man. No worry yourself, man. You have worry yourself. Man. Good morning. Good morning. Tell your last caller say a Joe Akira Nick. The world to me can listen to you right now. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Atreem, no. Do you need people not calling? No, I'm not. I walk, I walk up and don't make you know everybody I listen. Oh, you know everybody I listen. Muta. Yeah. A Manchester me I call you from. So you walk up and don't go I tell you, your name the for most everybody listen right now. Because yeah. what? We still have a drastic deal with... Muta, some things that we hear for your program, remember me tell you, when I hear them something in a church, when I hear them something at CNN, most of the information what we get are understanding upon your program, so tell him, say, a joke, him and make, we are listening. All right, him and listen to you, him and listen to you, him and listen to you. Tell him, tell him, say, a joke, him and make, we are listening. No, no, you tell him, you tell him, you tell him. I told him, I call him. Yeah. But we are, we are whole of meds. All right, mama. I remember me tell him, Muta, we can't even call you now to certain question because we're confused. <laughs> we're confused. Yeah. So tell him, call us so we are listening. All right, man. Tell, her, tell him, not tell him. Tell him, man. Tell him. Hey, the world tell me call you so, Muta. No right. see no way. All right, mama. Give thanks. All right, Muta. Take care and continue yeah. to do a good job when you do. All right. We are listening, Muta. We are listening. All right, mama. Who wrote the Gospel of Mark? And how do you know? I'm John Martinoni, president and founder of the Bible Christian Society. And today's question is focused on the idea of sola scriptura, which is Latin for the Bible alone or the Bible only, which is one of the fundamental pillars of most of Protestantism that we can know all we need to know about our Christian faith and about Christian morals by simply picking up the Bible and reading. So this question, who wrote the book of Mark, is a very important question because what it does is if all I need to know about Christianity I get from the Bible, if the Bible is my sole authority in matters of faith and morals, which it is for most Protestants, how can they answer that question? Because nowhere in the Bible does it tell us who wrote the book of Mark. This thing right here at the beginning of the Gospel of Mark in Scripture that says the Gospel according to Mark, that's not inspired Scripture. That's put in there by the publisher of the Bible. We don't have any originals from Mark that say, I, Mark, wrote this Gospel. 
or let's say the gospel according to Mark. So again, if you go by the Bible alone, how do you know that Mark wrote Mark? That somebody named Mark even wrote Mark? And how do you know that that Mark was inspired? Where in the Bible does it tell you who wrote the gospel of Mark so that you may trust that it is inspired scripture? Because if you don't know who wrote it, how can you know it's inspired scripture? This is very, very important. So as Catholics, we need to ask everyone who believes in the Bible alone as their sole rule of faith, who wrote Mark? And if they say Mark, the, the secretary of Peter and, and companion of Paul, the next question is, how do you know? Because I read Mark and there's nothing here that says, I, Mark, companion of Peter and Paul, wrote this gospel. Nothing in Luke that tells me. Nothing in Paul's letters that tells me who wrote the gospel of Mark. So what authority are you relying on? It's not the scriptures to know who wrote Mark. So again, the question is, who wrote the gospel of Mark? And how do you know? I reaffirm. Thought-provoking. Always smoking. Lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka.